Hey guys and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to meet up with my client. I'm going to show you guys the equipment that I bring along for the shoot this time. And I'm going to share with you guys a tip on how to bring the most value out of your destination pre-wedding. So let's go. You know, there are two things that as a client and as a photographer as well, can save on during a destination pre-wedding. It's actually on food and then on accommodation as well. So for myself, usually, like what I'm doing right now, I usually cook myself. Like you, if you are traveling for your destination pre-wedding and also you are doing your personal holidays at the same time, it will sometimes take up to weeks in a foreign country. And I felt that one of the best ways for me to save is to actually, like I said, cook myself. Let me show you guys how I do it. Uh, potatoes, chicken, onion, and three cloves of garlic. Maggie tom yum soup cube, okay. Then I have a fresh onion and salad as well, and also some mushrooms. two simple meals that will help you to stay on budget during your destination pre-wedding okay so this meal uh, will usually last us for the entire day okay and uh, it costs around maybe less than 50 ringgit uh, Malaysia okay guys so the equipment that I brought to prep for the photo shoot this time around is the Canon R5 I'll be using this as my main body. I have also the Canon R6 Mark II. This is my secondary body. And for the lenses, uh, it's my usual lineup. We'll start with the wide angle lens, the Canon uh, 16-35mm. I have the Canon 50mm 1.4. I have the Canon 85mm 1.8. Right. Then I have my gigantic Canon 70 200 f 2.8. Okay, that's my usual lens lineup from my super wide angle to telephoto. As for flashes, I have the Onsmo X2 Mini or better known as the AD200, right? And then I have the Onsmo X700 as well. I have two units of them. So, why do I bring two units? Uh, usually, I will work with two flashes one is for the key light and another one is for the backlight. And what does this third flash do? This one is a backup flash, just in case one of the flash malfunction during photo shoot. At least I have a spare flash to use. Okay, so my flash modifiers, you guys know that I am a Magmod user. So I brought along the uh, Max Sphere, okay? And then the Mac Grid as well, Mac Grids. And then uh, the full CTO gel, I have the Mac bounce as well, which acts as a small little softbox. So like I always mention, my speedlight modifiers are just all this, okay? So it's basically almost as big as the palm of my hand and all I do is just tuck it in one of the slots in my camera bag and that's it. Okay, so for light stands, I have the Yulanzi um, carbon fiber light stand, okay? This is extremely, extremely light, which is really suitable for me, especially when I shoot alone and I don't really like carrying big and heavy equipment. Carbon fiber tripods and light stands are always a lifesaver. So on top of the light stand, I have the Mac shoe, okay? So it's from Mac Mod as well. So this is usually where you put your flashes on top. You just slide it in and then lock it. 
and that's it. Okay, that's it. One mount, you just rotate, pull it out, then that's it. Okay, so basically that concludes my uh, equipment lineup for my photo shoot. So this time around, I'll be doing um, cinematography as well. So for cinematography, I'll be using um, Canon R5 as a main camera, okay, and uh, the Canon R6 Mark II as a backup camera, and I have my gimbal, the ginormous Ronin, okay, and of course, not to forget drones, we fly drones at places where it's allowed, okay, right. And this is the arsenal I have to create my shots. Alright, so now I'm on the way to my client's accommodation. Um, just to meet them up and just to say hello and get comfortable with each other. And uh, to just share with them the result of my recce yesterday, which everything was great. There's no... Uh, things like constructions going on, um, so everything will be according to plan. So, so meeting up with them uh, without any need to do changes to our shooting schedule will be a quick one. Uh, we'll just say hello to them and then, uh, like I said, get comfortable with them. And then we will wait for tomorrow when the time. Comes. Uh, Michelle? Got this. Okay, 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 okay. 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 Okay, warmth out from each other, they get comfortable with me as well and I get to know them a little bit uh, better instead of you know just meeting up with clients on the day of the shoot itself uh, things might get a little bit awkward I mean it's just human nature that uh, once we have met with each other and talked with each other then the day after we uh, become more closer to each other so um, the meeting up session is done uh, everything went very well so right now okay so one of the way to actually add value to your destination pre-wedding uh, aka be on budget is to actually buy your daily uh, necessities from um, local supermarkets or local groceries as such I mean if you were to purchase your things from like touristy uh, marts uh, it's gonna be um, more expensive compared to places like this where it's only frequented by the locals Another great way to save is to ride the locals, that is to take the metro and also available trams. Travelling during low season and staying in Airbnbs is also a great way to add value to your destination pre-wedding. during low season 
most notably during winters and you can always take advantage of the airfare to add really good value to your destination pre-wedding. I personally love to stay at Airbnbs simply because I can do all my basic necessities at cost price. Basic necessities such as laundry and also cooking. And with everything at cost price, that will add great value to your destination pre-wedding.